home front. Written and narrated by Butterfly Coffee. Produced for audio by Mr. Judge. Louise had been sitting on the out of use line for just over two weeks or so. At first, she simply thought Mr. Turner was taking an extraordinarily long time to make the necessary arrangements for her repaint back into Brunswick Green. But as she scanned for signs of someone coming towards her, it started to sink in where she actually was. The sight of engines in pieces made her angry, and she began to kick up a royal fuss, barking and screaming at everyone to shunt her away. But no one came near Louise. The 1400s tantrums descended into sulking as she continued to sit, Hercule's words replaying in her smoke box. Then the air raid had come. Louise was out in the open and couldn't contain herself when she finally came to. The massive crater was just a few feet in front of her, and the carnage all around made her panic. She began to scream and cry in earnest, begging for someone to move her away. When no one did, the auto tank began to seriously think about her actions. It almost hurt for such a proud engine like her to be so introspective. But she'd nearly been blown to bits. She'd nearly been served to a scrap merchant on a silver plate. Maybe she had to reconsider if it was really worth making much more of a mountain out of this molehill. At long last, Louise awoke from a forlorn doze to see a wonderful sight. Mr. Turner was walking across the ballast towards her. The 1400 put on her bravest face and prepared to greet him. Louise? Mr. Turner spoke calmly and gently. I hope the recent air raid has not left you too upset. Upset, sir? It has left me positively traumatised. I dare say I've even been feeling quite unwell. Louise shuddered. Although, she added quietly, I suppose I've been doing a little... a little bit of thinking. The Great Western Engine had to make herself say these words. She almost felt dirty for doing so. Oh? Mr. Turner played along as if he were oblivious. Do explain, then. I, I suppose it was... Rather unnecessary for me to gripe about this repaint. I am not the only one who is being stripped of their dignity. And I also accept that there are more pressing matters at hand. Well, Louise, I'm glad to hear you've had a change of heart. Mr. Turner smiled, clapping his hands together. I can put you back into work after this raid and I trust you'll be on your best behaviour, since we are in desperate need of a stationary boiler until power can be provided from elsewhere. Oh, Brunella above, please, sir, no! That had done it. Louise looked as white as a ghost. You can't possibly want me for that. I'm too valuable and I'm in pristine condition. I'm still a viable asset to the station. I, I insist you put me back into work as soon as possible, Mr. Turner, sir. The Shedmaster chuckled, taking a step back. <laughs> you won't always be able to work on the Morton Hampstead branch, he warned. It's far more likely you'll be put to work shunting. Please, sir, I'll do it, I'll do it. Just, for goodness sakes, don't let me be almost blown to Kingdom Cup! Mr. Turner gave a mock pause of consideration. He finally waved over some men. Get her into steam as quick as you can, please then turned to Louise. I'm only doing this on the promise that you behave yourself. One wheel out of line and you're coming straight back here to be modified. Understand? Oh, of course, sir. Absolutely anything you say, sir. Yes, yes. Louise felt very happy and relieved to be going back into work again. 
being threatened with becoming a stationary boiler was simply too ghastly a fate for a splendid engine like her. Just thinking about it made her feel faint. Excellent, Mr. Turner said. I'd like you to begin with some shunting. Louise wanted to groan and roll her eyes, but given her delicate situation, she decided against it. She silently took a great western oath that she would do everything in her power to get through today unscathed. The 1400 was a little slow to start, so Apanya shunted her away from the out of use line at last and towards the engine shed. Not being fired for a time had left Louise's joint stiff and she dutifully complained. Oh dear goodness me! Do you think they forgot to oil me properly? I think they have, the scoundrels! Men got better things to do than fawn over you, chuckled the pannier in a gurgling laugh. Louise harumphed, then gasped aloud. <gasps> you! Oh no. 6719 and Louise looked at each other in the eye and began sputtering. Surely I'm not to work with the plebeian industrial? That would be far too common for an engine of my standing! I don't exactly like you either, you know, muttered 6719. Besides, Mr. Turner said we got to work together today. I had no say in it. Why, you! Louise remembered that she had that oath against her, and she took a big breath to calm herself. I'm afraid I shall not be working or shunting with that, she stated in a controlled hiss. Well, from what I heard, the panier said, it's this, a stationary boiler, or I did hear one of a school that needs a new blackboard, if you fancy a career change. A blackboard? Louise scoffed indignantly. I shall be nothing of the sort! How vulgar! I suppose that shunting with that will have to do, she grumbled at last. The industrial was not looking forward to this. He hadn't even properly worked with Louise, but he was already a keen judge of her character. Ah, <sighs> stuffed up prat, he thought to himself. 6719 and Louise were kept busy organising empty wagons into the siding or making trains from loaded wagons for the bigger engines to take away. As if that wasn't bad enough for Louise, she was able to negotiate the tighter curves in the main yard. So not only was she working alongside an industrial, but everyone could see her doing it. The 1400 alternated between cursing under her breath and complaining loudly, while 6719 did little more than try to complete his fair share of the work to the best of his ability, while resisting the urge to run his mouth at Louise. It would all come to a head sooner than he thought, however. I will if you get out of my way! I'm not in your way, I'm a whole track away from you. Louise, that one can to go on track four. It is on track four. No, it's not on track five. Oh, don't be so stupid. Can you even count? Can you even read the yard layout properly? I can read it better than you can. You haven't been here as long as I have. Yes, but I've been on this yard. Nope, I've, 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 I've been on this yard. Nope, I just, nope. Would you just... No! Nope. I can't just, understand just, a word of your Julie had been asked to take a supplies train, and Louise and 6719 were to shunt it into place. The train consisted of a large variety of box vans and covered trucks, and Julie was running late due to delays. This meant that when she arrived at Newton Abbott, she had to be able to go from one train to the other straight away. Louise had been dragging her wheels all day, and 6719 was getting more and more fed up. The industrial bumped five box vans into each other and briskly moved them along. Louise yawned dramatically. Oh, oh 
gosh, this is almost as dreary as watching paint dry. She groaned noisily. Though I imagine this menial grunt work is fitting for you, industrial. <sighs> Six, seven, one, nine, side. Not this again. Louise, we need to have this train ready for Julie to take away. He said, trying to keep his tone level. I can't put this train together by myself. Indeed, Louise agreed. Such a small engine like you can't possibly be of much use other than for this monotonous display. You would be quite lost without them. Then help me, perhaps? Oh no, I've done more than my fair share, and I'm quite bored of this. You can finish off. This great steaming pile of... 6719 stopped himself and gave a boost of steam. After not more than a pause, he decided he would wind Louise up a little. <laughs> you say you're finished because you can't do as much as me. He smirked cheekily. I'll bet you can't even pull flaking paint off a garden shed. Louise fumed. Garden shed indeed, she growled. You say that to me again and I'll teach you to... 6719 rolled backwards from the vans he'd just shunted and looked across two tracks to seven fully loaded vans waiting to be arranged. See those vans on track five? Please, go on. Show me how well a novelty westerner can shut. I might just be impressed. Louise hissed a great cloud of steam from her cylinders. She hopped over to the box vans and bumped into them, gathering herself up before... Nothing. Nothing was happening. What? Louise was pushing against the box fans, but she wasn't moving. Her wheels just spun and spun. Gracious. Louise abruptly stopped and tried to calm herself before she was coupled up and began tugging backwards. She strained hard, but nothing happened. Her wheels still spun helplessly. Stop it, Louise. You'll break something. Besides, you wouldn't be able to move those vans even if you were trying. I am trying, Blast you! Oh? Then I know why you're struggling. I beg your pardon? Louise asked quietly, having gone a delightful shade of red. It's your wheels, 6719 said simply. They're too big. Sure, they'll give you a nice turn of speed, but you can't put any force down onto the ground. And that's what counts when you're shunting. No wonder you can't move anything. Ah, and Shunters forgot to take the brakes off again. He thought to himself. Louise didn't say a word. She looked far too embarrassed. Upstaged by a common industrial. You want some help? After a long pause, the 1400 let 6719 take over. He could handle five wagons easily, and Louise would bring in two more on top of that. Working in this fashion, they had the train ready to go, just as Julie pulled in. Louise watched the Black Five depart, and began to think again. This had not been the work she liked, or ever saw herself doing. But it was... acceptable? Yes, she supposed finding a way to co-manage with an engine so efficiently, even if you were a grubby industrial, was very acceptable. She was surprised at herself for being so tolerant. It seemed that making great western oats was something she would have to do more often. You'd do it again then? Certainly not! Louise was speaking with the other engines at the sheds that night giving a haughty response to Hercule's teasing. It was pleasant to be working again, I accept. But to do so with an industrial is still a huge blow to my sensibilities. I shall take all measures to avoid him. It's Joe. Louise looked over. I beg your pardon? 6719 spoke in a resolute way. My name is Joe, and I'd appreciate it if you'd call me that. All the engines were quiet. 
When did 6719 become this outspoken? Louise coughed awkwardly, nervously. <coughs> You've been loitering with the Midlander a little too long, I feel. And there's another thing. Her name is Caitlin. You refer to everyone else by name, but not us. What? Just because we aren't as important, we aren't respected? We even call Duchess and Julie by their names instead of saying Midlander. Just because I don't say anything on Shed doesn't mean I don't listen. Duchess stared on in a shocked awe. Everyone did. Louise had been calling everyone by name except Caitlin and 6719. Why was that? Why did they not get called properly? All eyes were on Louise as she faltered, trying in vain to explain herself. I, I didn't see why you feel you should... I... I don't see why you feel you should... Well, intrude so invasively on my own decisions. It's not your business. The industrial just stared. Okay, he said at last. If you're not going to address me by my name, I won't address you at all. Seems fair enough to me. Oh, don't be absurd, you miscreant, Louise scoffed. Nothing. 6719 didn't even look at the auto tank. I said don't be absurd, industrial. Again, nothing. This was getting ridiculous. Answer me, industrial! 6719 then turned to talk to Caitlin, who shook off her earlier surprise and began happily conversing with him. No one had talked to Louise like that and had her look so angrily shocked. Must have been his standing that did it. The 1400 began calling him, trying every trick in the book to make 6719 pay attention, but he wouldn't even acknowledge her. The Great Western Auto Tank became more irate, and her attempts to call 6719 were more persistent. She began insulting, interrupting, talking over the top of him as obnoxiously as she could, but nothing worked. The other engines watched with interest as Louise looked more and more out of her depth, all while 6719 and Caitlin were still talking and chuckling with each other. Yes. Louise stopped dead. She didn't expect for it to actually work. Joe stared back at her with an open gaze. Did you want something from me? Louise seemed truly flabbergasted now that he was genuinely paying attention to her. She opened her mouth to speak, but was so startled by Joe's response that she'd forgotten what she wanted to say. Joe spotted his chance for a tease and... Putting on his best posh voice, he crowed. <clears throat> Come on now, you lonely westerner. Speak up, I say. <laughs> Caitlin couldn't help but giggle. Neither could Duchess. <laughs> oh no, I've been upstage. <laughs> Joe cried dramatically. Woe is me, woe is me. <laughs> oh, how revolting and impetuous of you, wailed Hercule. How shall I, the magnificent and noble Louise, ever recover from such a disaster? In a short time, the sheds had gone from a state of calm to a state of hysterics. No one could stop themselves from falling about laughing at Louise's inability to save face. It was, quite simply, hilarious. The 1400 was not spared by anyone, not even her fellow Great Western engines. They all took turns mimicking her, and by the time she could finally process what was happening, it was too late. No one could hear her shrieks and wails of angry shock. It was a small reprieve from the horrors of war, but it was a reprieve that was desperately needed, and it was one that would come to be fondly remembered by all. Well, all but Louise, of course. <laughs> <laughs>